Hey guys, welcome back to the Mygo YouTube channel. Today we've got the best grow light for a 4x4. That is the best grow light that I've tested over the last number of years and are still available on the market. I have tested each of these lights in a 4x4 area, as I said, at their optimum hanging height. That is by the manufacturer's recommendations. So the best setup for the light in question. And it's been tested in um, 4x4. I've taken 64 power measurements across the test area with the Apogee ePower sensor. I don't mention the LED types or the spectrum in this video for each of the lights. They're pretty much all combination of warm white, cool white, and 660 nanometer uh, deep red LEDs. There are many variations and types of LEDs that can be used some which are less less efficient at normal power can be you can use more of them at lower power they actually are more efficient than some other leds used at higher power if that makes sense so i don't mention led type most are reliable now these days the calculation the way they're ordered is by the most expensive to the best value and that calculation is done based on the efficiency of the light and the cost of the fixture the calculation for the electrical consumption is over a three year period and based on the average US rate of 16.8 cents per kilowatt hour uh, over three years. And that's to deliver 800 micromoles average in that four by four area. So first light on the list is the Lumitech or Photon Tech. Lumitech is the UK or European brand, Photon Tech being the US brand. And it's their 465 watt pro very nice fixture in terms of quality of build. It's got those uh, magnetic bars that clip into place. Getting a little bit old now and quite expensive for what it is. Relatively low efficiency means it has quite a high running cost on top of a, a quite a high fixture cost. Next one then is the Grower's Choice ROI E420. Again, fairly old fixture at this stage, relatively uh, old wattage. But it is heavy duty and pretty good efficiency, but a little bit expensive for the, the fixture itself. A nice fixture overall. Then you have the Vivison Aerolite 4 pack. This is 420 watts. This is a fairly unique sort of setup. It's a modular design, so it's attaching four by 100 watt fixtures together. A little bit clunky the way they go together using brackets and screws to fit them together and lots of wires having to be used to connect them together and control them at the same time relatively low wattage 420 watts lowest efficiency in this selection of uh, two micromoles per watt which is not great yeah low average power not really maximizing potential yield out of a 4x4 then we have the spider farmer sf4 438 watts only 459 dollars quite a cheap light it's an old style basic panel led light with the driver mounted on the back relatively low efficiency at 2.06 not a great spread behaves like a single source really quite central high intensity at the center and not great spread out to the edges then we have the high photon flux hpf 4000 that's just touching on 500 watts for 449 dollars highest wattage so far good value just okay efficiency at 2.16, but a good spread. They seem to be heavily discounted now, these, these lights, so it might be the end of the line, your chance to pick one up for cheap. Then we have the Parlight Expert 600, 666 watts, so nice high wattage for this space, 2.31 efficiency, which is very good. Gorgeous looking fixture, really nicely designed, and uh, yeah, delivers a good spread. Just in that zone of 1067 average power of requiring CO2 to make use of that high power intensity. We then have the Forever Green Indoors Uniformity Pro Flex, a US company, 630 watts, $700. Pretty good value for money there. Good efficiency, 2.35. Really good average power, 1026. Nice build quality, very good spread. As the name suggests, most uniform light distribution of the lights on this list. Then have the Mars Hydro FC 8000. This is really high wattage at 813 watts for $799. So very good value for money there in terms of dollars per watt. Good efficiency at 2.3. Average power of 1,298 micromoles. So definitely in that zone requiring CO2. It's badged as their folding commercial. Not the best looking fixture. Put a lot of wires and connecting up bars and that sort of thing. But uh, good value for money for that, that wattage, definitely. Then we have the Spider Farmer SE5000, just 
just under 500 watts, $569, pretty good value there, very good efficiency at 2.5 and delivering an average power of 780, which is pretty good. Again, it's a bit of a clunky design, LED bar type with screwed in LED bars and, and lots of wires and stuff. So not much of a looker, but um, good value for money, as I said, and uh, good efficiency. Then we have the Spider Farmer SE7000, again badged for the 4x4, $759. So good value for a 733 watt fixture. Very good efficiency again, 2.46, a high average power of 1,257, so really requiring CO2 in a 4x4 setup. Self-assembly again with, with screwed in bars and lots of wires and not the, again, not the most attractive of fixtures, but definitely delivers a, a, a good bang for buck. Then I have one of my own favorites, the Viper Spectra KS5000, nearly touching 500 watts, $400. Really nicely made fixture, very solid, good efficiency with excellent spread, delivers uh, 2.3 efficiency, average of just under 800 par. So uh, for $400, it's an excellent fixture and nice company, like dealing with them. Then got the Medicro Midi Sun 320 watt, only 328 watts this one, but $239. So really good value for money in terms of dollar per watt. 2.28 efficiency, but only 547 average par. It's a panel light, nice fix, a nice dimmer control, a nice little interface there and screen, low average power and, and, and not great spread. We then have the Migro Array 4, my own light, just here, right behind me, um, foldable LED bar type, high efficiency. So it's 500 watts, $475. 2.47 efficiency, delivering an average power of 871 micromoles. Just in terms of the, I think that's about the sweet spot really in terms of getting a return on light intensity versus yield. Hopefully you'll find a good balance between performance and cost. Nice quality fixture, I think too. Then we have the Mars Hydro SCE 1000, big, big fixture, 1000 watts uh, for only $819, exceptionally good value for money. Really good efficiency too, 2.44, but delivering an average power of 1,668. Very, very high average power, definitely requiring CO2. It is a strange fixture. You can extend it to a six by four area. It has these kind of slidable bars on the end. Not really sure why they do that. Build quality is not great either. I don't really get the extendable um, fixture bit and when and where and why you'd use that. But uh, as I said, uh, good value for money for what it is. So that's the overall look on 4x4s. I um, hope you enjoyed. Please leave comments below on what you think of any of these fixtures. Would love to hear back from you if you have one of them, what your experience was. And uh, yeah, take care.